Good evening everyone. In this video I will go briefly over what we were supposed to cover today in week T, uh, week uh, 6. So um, I'm downloading the Human Computer Interaction Principles PPT and also for the in-class exercise that uh, you will you can submit to receive uh, in-class participation points uh, is this file so you can click on this file and then uh, fill it out and I already kind of provided you with a video for this uh, you can follow the video if you want or if you are already familiar with it uh, you can go ahead and and uh, fill out the the questions here answer those questions that or the queries and send me uh, the the file with the answers uh, either in Word document or in uh, in Microsoft Access so either way will work but you can just fill out actually it will make it much uh, easier if you copy and paste your your query answers and put them in a Word document and send them to me all right so that's uh, that's for this SQL uh, regarding the SQL exercise but the other one is so now the next the other thing is that we want to go over the human computer interaction uh, and I want to briefly go over some of the points because this is part of the reading so I will let you read this so it seems to be so I will let you uh, read those this uh, those slides uh, because they have very valuable information that will help you to when you are building the the forms as well as the reports user interface so let's go on so so far this is what we have been doing so far and uh, we have been going through the system development life cycle and actually yesterday uh, I went along with the Dean and we met with the Dean of the School of Health Professions at the OU Medical Center and they have been actually um, appreciating that we are offering this class because it turns out that they don't have an electronic health records yet at the School of Health Professions and they are still using the paper-based uh, system that we talked about for this particular example for this facility so they are looking for people with this skill that can help them uh, transform from paper-based into an electronic uh, health record system. And uh, so uh, this is kind of emphasizes the benefit of this class and I, I hope that you have uh, been gaining a lot of valuable information and valuable skills th throughout this class in terms of project management which was in the first phase of the system development life cycle and then with the end user requirements that was another important skill that you can actually put it in your resume so project management is one of the skills that you can put it there uh, another skill is end user requirements this is where system analysts or business analysts most of the jobs actually are based so requirement analysis, you, you did that through interviewing the end user and examining the existing documentations of the client. And then we, we moved on to the component design and we said there were three component design and the conceptual model where we just developed or built those entities which are based basically themes and every theme has characteristics that we want to collect about it. Um, those characteristics are basically the attributes for each entity and then in the uh, conceptual model we connected or we created those entities and we connected them along with the cardinalities the one to many one to one or uh, many to many and then we we went on to the next design model which is so we transformed or we went from the conceptual model into the logical model while we were in the component design stage so the logical model is the model where we decided where to put the foreign key 
and we had also rules of thumb where to put the foreign key when we have a one-to-one -one, uh, maximum cardinality and zero to zero uh, or zero to one minimum cardinality so we all we covered that er, uh, or, uh, already about the logical model and then the third model was the physical model will you where you transform the logical model that you had built and you transform that into an actual database and actual tables and you connected those tables and that's what you actually submitted or you you submitted today so you created those tables based on the integer relationship diagram that you designed and you built from scratch and now you will see the fruits of your hard work that you have done so far and then based on that we will be able to uh, create forms and queries and reports uh, so now we moved actually we are kind of in between the component design which is the physical model and we already kind of started with the implementation because we already built the the, the tables so now the implementation will be completed after we create the, 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 the forms and reports and so let's uh, in order to create the forms and reports we need to understand the basic and the foundational principles of human computer interface or interactions so I will let you read some of those so I will skip some of those uh, slides because I will let you read them and I will just go on and highlight some of the the points why user interface is important because it enables the end user to edit enter and view and delete information so the end user doesn't have to learn or to be able to create a database in access but they need to be able to use those forms and reports that you created for them that's kind of the main uh, the most important aspect of the project that you or the system that you develop and also another important aspect of the project you develop is minimizing possible errors and we have we went through the normalization process and uh, and and we have used a lot of techniques to minimize errors so what are the principles or the objectives of constructing forms of reports is accuracy so principles of uh, human computer interaction or interface is accuracy meaning that the end user has to finish each task accurately and, and successfully and the second one is attractiveness so as we all know that attractiveness is is very important and actually I just read uh, recently about the the role of attractiveness in terms of technology addiction and uh, it turned out that addiction of information technologies such as phone addiction is resulted from the beauty or the beautiful design of the phone the beautiful colors the beautiful icons that we see and we turn we tend to be addicted to uh, checking our phones because of that beautiful color and beautiful design that we see all the time so uh, again it is very important and it is helpful if we can create that addiction for a very beneficial uh, tool such as the database that you or the system that you are the electronic health records that you are developing for the for the nurses in this in this uh, scenario so attractiveness it needs to be beautiful for the end user to use it and then consistency all the forms and reports they need to use the same colors kind of the same themes the same um, uh, feel that you have for them so we, it needs to be consistent when you are using navigation buttons they need to be in the same place in all forms and and if you want to use them in reports also they need to be in the same location and using the same sizes and so on and then the ease of use ease of use here what we mean not only that the system needs to be easy to use but also it needs to not require cognitive efforts from the end user the end user doesn't doesn't have to remember anything while they are using the system so try to make it as simple as as easy as possible for the end user not to have to learn something every time they use the system and they don't need to use their cognitive efforts and remember things so that's what we mean here by ease of use if, if, if effectiveness means that the end user needs to be able to complete the tasks with perfection 
and for that specific purpose. And simplicity here, we what we mean by simplicity is that the form or the report needs to be in a simple manner. You don't have to use some of those colors that are annoying or uh, or just distracting. It has to be simple. You can use black and white, for example, uh, but you can use other colors. That's not the, the, what I want to mean, what I want to say here. But simplicity is that you don't clutter the form with all kinds of, of things it needs to be simple if you use let's say black and white colors and make use of the spaces make sure that there is blank spaces and and empty spaces here and there for us for the end users to breathe rather than overwhelm them with text all over so you can minimize for example you can use the tipping uh, or you can use for example help buttons Instead of putting so much content in the form, you can put it in a help button where if they need more information about a certain uh, th certain button or a certain field, they can click on that help button and then a new form opens up that has more details about it. So that's what we mean here by simplicity. Don't overwhelm the end user with content. So health or a human computer interaction or interface is very important so that the end user can complete their tasks safely effectively efficiently and enjoyably basically this is summarizes what I just mentioned earlier so the end user needs to be able to finish their tasks with high quality user interface because if they don't have high quality user interface then it will lead to user frustration and low productivity because if the, you are using a form that is not let's say saving the content every time you will assume that it is saving it but it's not saving it then you will have to go back and redo it so it lowers productivity in that sense and in increases st stress uh, if you are trying to get it to do something and it doesn't and keeps giving you error message and uh, because of that poor interface design then it increases the stress and as I said nurses they are already stressed because of their job and we don't want to over stress them even more with the system that we develop for them and then they're under utilization of the system because if we have poor design then the system will be underutilized so we need to keep it simple and the user interface needs to be high quality so they can be you know, utilized well increased mistakes in in data uh, entry so we will try to avoid all of those uh, poor or negative aspects of design so um, here are some of the guidelines of the design of the forms and reports that I want to emphasize first meaningful titles for every form every title they need to have every form every report need to have meaningful titles so uh, we have learned how to create titles so far and those titles they need to be meaningful for example let's say that two main forms that you will need at least two main forms in your database or in your application that you are creating one form needs to be called resident demographics or resident and that resident form can be a main form with several sub forms but that form has to have all the components of the resident their names their gender their addresses their phone numbers and phone types and then also their diagnosis so that's one form and then the other form is the assessment form and the assessment form sh needs to replicate the paper-based form that you have been given in the request for proposal and those documentations that you were given so those are the two main forms that needs to be uh, included in your in your uh, in your system as well as for the reports you have four reports that were requested and they have more details about what they really want so make sure that you have meaningful titles for those so for the assessment uh, form you can call it assessment form and the other one you can call it resident form but by by having those two you it is kind of comprehensive those titles are comprehensive they kind of indicate what we really want to co what what we are collecting from for them and then meaningful information so what do we mean here by meaningful information is that 
in the assessment we don't need to include let's say fields that don't add any value to the end user for example in the assessment table we have a primary key that is a surrogate key when we say the surrogate key is a system generated primary key that doesn't have a, any meaning by itself for example it goes from one all the way to infinity in that case we don't want to show that it is not meaningful information so we don't want to show it or here not all demographics in the assessment form need to be shown in the assessment form for example we just need their maybe names and verify maybe their date of birth but just whatever uh, the the original uh, paper-based form was uh, was showing so that's what we want to show and then balance the layout so another guideline or another important uh, feature of uh, user interface is the balance layout this is what we mean here by symmetry if you have taken an art appreciation course you might have gone through the symmetry concept where you want to make sure that the the user interface or the picture or the image that you are working with is balanced from the right side to the left side so we need to be uh, making sure that the interface is symmetric and then design an easy navigation system so it's very important that the end user knows where they are and how to go back and forth for example let's say that as soon as I open the system I need to go to a main main menu and then the main menu should navigate or should uh, I should be able to navigate as an end user from the main menu to other forms let's say to the resident form when I am in the resident form I need to be able to navigate to go back to the main menu or to proceed to go into the assessment form so I need to be able to know where I am and how to go back because some bad design that I have noticed in 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 uh, some systems that it takes you to a one page and then th you don't know how especially if you people soft when you are there then you can't go back or you have to close it and go on and log in and um, uh, in order to go and visit another page so it is not friendly in that case so for us we will need we will try to avoid that by making sure that the navigation system is clearly stated and, uh, and inputted and then how can we highlight some information as you can see here the color played a very big difference here because we are using purple color so color is one way that if we want to highlight some information and in your case you remember we said that the end user emphasized or they wanted us to use color for conditional formatting for example for red for high risk and yellow for medium to low risk and no risk is in green uh, so that kind of highlights some information for us and then different fonts can also highlight information and the size also shows the difference and importance of, of information boxing also underlying using all capital letters but I would I would be conservative in using all cap letters because many people understand all cap letters as shouting or yelling at someone so we don't want to yell at anybody so let's avoid that all capital letters and then off uh, setting here spaces kind of also shows that there is an importance so um, so we will need to make sure that the forms are easy to fill out so in here what we mean here by it flows some some forms that we when we fill them out they can be uh, let's say in two columns so one form can be filled out let's say from top down and then we go uh, to the next column top down so that's kind of just like an N shape to some extent you can say or, or uh, inverse N shape but uh, so that's one way the flow it needs to be consistent we need to start from top down and then top down or you can go from left to right and then down to from left to right so that's what i mean here by the z the z flow so you start from left to right and then you go down and then left to right and so on so it needs to be logical and then grouping also helps for example if i am talking about the address so in the resident form the address needs to be 
group by itself somewhere in the form and let's say the phone numbers should be grouped by itself diagnosis should be by itself so that's what we mean here by grouping and uh, so having a heading or main body and sub form so heading again it helps kind of to have a heading for a sub form for example if in the resident form you have one form that will be filling out diagnosis so i need the heading for that diagnosis and well, you can call it diagnosis and then i need heading for phone numbers or i need a heading for address for example uh, so it's very important that we keep this in mind when we are developing the user interface forms so and we need to add command buttons so the command buttons here help us kind of to save um, maybe move forward move backward so command buttons are very important and also command buttons can help us to navigate from that form to another form or from that form to the main menu or uh, from the main menu to some form uh, to uh, other forms or to other reports. So navigation or command buttons are very important. So let's make use out of them. And also you can use close buttons uh, to close. I would not use delete, but I will maybe save and close buttons and then navigation going back home uh, or going back to the main menu and then i will use caption proper uh, property so caption some people if you have noticed in some forms they gave you kind of an example how to fill out a date for example date of birth so how the date of birth i will uh, i will use input mask for it because i don't want people to open let's say the the calendar and try to navigate and go back let's say 20 30 40 50 years back by go using the arrow uh, so i would just use the input mask and i would put a caption underneath it um, and then i will create labels so the labels they need to be spelled out they i will not use abbreviation for labels and also you can use labels for extra information for example for, for help if you want to explain to the end user what we mean here by history of falling and then you can add more information or description of that and in another form so and then you can put a label as kind of for help and then they can click on that help button and then another window will come up with a pop-up that has more details about the that particular field for example and I will show you an example maybe in a little bit what I mean by that and then default values remember when we said default values for example the assessment date needs to be defaulted to the now function where you show the date and the time that is current when that assessment was created and then validation if it is applicable I would definitely use validation and we have done validation rules examples in class in the past so aesthetic and i can't you know, uh, emphasize it more aesthetics or beautiful or attractiveness of the forms and reports is is very important because it encourages completion and and so there are benefits and advantages and disadvantages of color so we can one of the advantages of color is that it soothes the eye it, it emphasizes the organization of the inf information and it also helps us with attention to warnings for example if you are using a red color that might be a warning and and one of the problems with colors is that there some end users might be color blind so we need to keep that in mind and also depending on the machine you might see something as red but when you open it in another machine or in the in the school computer that you are where you are presenting it might degrade the the quality of that color so we need to keep that in mind so color also can help us highlighting some important information and it also color has meaning so red means danger green normality and blue is called uh, refers to cold uh, and so on so we need it's important that we understand this about color so color is very helpful especially when we are using the background color we need to use it carefully remember when you did in um, tutorial 7 actually your case for tutorial 7 you learned how to use background color 
and how beautiful it looks when you are using the background color. So it can improve the, the attractiveness of your design of your interface. So we will not, it is not recommended to use or more than six different colors. So I would not use more than six different colors. Uh, which is very important. So and also be consistent across the whole system. What I mean here by consistent, as I mentioned earlier, so be consistent with the background color, for example, the title, the size of the title, for example, the color of the title uh, needs to be consistent. The location of the navigation buttons should be consistent uh, and so on. And also be careful with the overlapping colors. Uh, and also, uh, let's see, um, another thing is for colors. We have warm colors versus uh, cold colors. So the warm colors here include the red and yellow, and the cold colors are the blue and green. So we will avoid uh, using overlapping colors such as this ones. As you can see here, avoid text over pictures. You can barely see it. And the yellow over white, it you can barely see this 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 word so we will try to avoid using some overlapping colors so we will use uh, more positive uh, presentation rather than uh, those overlapping colors so the positive presentation is what we mean by that is an example uh, like when we have a white background and black uh, text in this case, it is called positive presentation. So if we are using black background and, pos and, 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 and white text, in this case, it is called negative presentation. So which, which one is best, you can, you can actually, it's up to you, but I would avoid using black back background and white <laughs> text. So I'll definitely use the first one but it's up to you to do the decide for your own uh, but the most common will that's why you see google always uses white background and all other other companies are using white background or bright background and if the negative presentation was was helpful actually google or facebook and all other companies would have been using it so again that's kind of an indication that positive presentation is more powerful and much preferred so we'll need also to be careful when we are using letter spacing as you can see here space if we don't have space between the dash or the 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 mark the hash mark uh and also the the three it looks like it is a B uh, and so on. So we will need to uh, not use hard fonts to read like this one. And also we will be uh, careful with the wordings, <laughs> how to word things and have with misinterpretation. Legibility, so we need to be concise and we need to use icons that are meaningful. For example, we can use like the exclamation mark, for example, for uh, questions or for uh, we can use let's say question mark for questions or we can use so we need to be careful when we are using icons and then we need to avoid using blinking or moving text or because actually they are distracting uh, the end user from doing the task that they are supposed to and then you should always strive to left justify uh, in some cases you might but we will definitely try to always left justify and then there are two types of two major types of fonts there is the sans serif fonts which actually has edges in their um, they have sign of no, nodes or ed, uh, in their edges such as times new romans as you can see they are more readable but most people actually prefer the serif fonts, which is Arial that doesn't have any nodes in their uh, edges. So we'll try to avoid uh, caps for text as much as possible. So I want you to look at this one and try to identify and pause for a moment and try to identify what is wrong with this form. So, so I'll let you think about it now. There are a couple of things that are wrong with it. There is no logical logical 
the labels they are not spelled out there is no this customer ID is not left justified and also the the order if you notice here we started with the surname and then first name and then customer title I would start with the customer title so it's not logical order and then customer house is here and then moves on to the to the 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 telephone and then the street so the address is not grouped so they need to be grouped like every theme in one group by itself and then i need to spell out the labels i need to use color i need i need to have a, a, a meaningful title for each of those groups or a title for the form and the title for the each group i need also to have navigation buttons and i don't have them i would never use those navigation buttons that are here I need more meaningful information so this is a much better one it's a little bit more improved so there is uh, there is a title there is really efficient use of the colors here and there and they have buttons and they have labels or captions explaining what each one of those buttons do so you got the idea here so this is another battery uh, design of a report so it is all listed in one page and as you can see some of this data is, is missing for example the address is half cut and it's not and also the titles they are not spelled out and they are not clear so this is an example of a bad design for the report so now and also the title of the report is customers one uh, it doesn't make sense but here we have customers list grouped by region it's more meaningful and then they are grouped by uh, and they have lines that we learned how to use them and they have highlights and they have bolds and they have it so it looks much more beautiful here so again it's very important that we have a menu system so the menu system is very important because it helps us kind of to to plan where we start and where we go from there so depending on the purpose you can identify all the tasks that you want your end user to go through or your system to perform and then based on those tasks you can uh, put them into themes and then every theme uh, is in a, is a, is in a group basically and then you can create buttons for them so this is kind of an example of a hierarchy or a menu system so the menu system uh, in our case we will have reports is one of the branches and then we have four reports and you can double check with the request for proposal what are those reports and other documents as well show what the reports are in details and then forms in in our in our case we have only two forms that we are interested in for the end user to be able to access is the resident form and the assessment form so that's all that we want for the main menu so the main menu that's when the the default form that the end user gets into so creating the user interface so you can create a navigation form or a main menu form using switchboard so switchboard manager in access and another option is to create your own main menu using unbound form so this is an example of switchboard which I actually personally don't like the switchboard that is generated by Microsoft Access because it doesn't look professional and it doesn't give you an option to do more to it uh, it is very limited so this is based on a form that you yourself can create and bound form so blank form and then create the buttons add the buttons add the colors and pictures to it and so on so this is much more beautiful form than the switchboard which is very dull so this is what I would recommend create something that you yourself design rather than having uh, you know the switchboard dictate to you what to do so again this is a summary of what we have done and remember that we will have exam 2 over modules four to six and so we are going to emphasize the content that we have talked about in class including the SQL statements retrieving data from one table and retrieving data from multiple tables and also we will emphasize the content that we talked about since um, 
last exam so we we talked about where to put the foreign key for example the rules of thumb those are some of the questions that will be asked and then normalization process we talked about it um, so that will be covered in the exam so it's going to be multiple choice it's going to be um, questions and then essay questions for example uh, the SQL statements I will give you a data set and then I will give you a couple of questions I want you to answer and save them in that um, in that file and then uh, and submit them so that's all for uh, exam two and I'm sure you will do great you will do much better this time um, and you all did great but maybe uh, this time you can even do better and then for the homework it is uh, you know working on the forms and reports and case number 10.